Well, how long have I got? I've actually got a minute and a half. This is unbelievable for one of my 10 minute, 10 minute challenges. I normally have to cheat an awful lot. So sometimes sketching time is short. Maybe we only have a few minutes. Um, sometimes we only feel like sketching for a few minutes. And in both of these scenarios, it can feel stressful that, you know, oh, what's the point? Because we're not going to get anything good done in 10 minutes, are we? Well, maybe we are. So in this video, that's exactly what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how I sketch in 10 minutes. So I sort of simplify it down into a basically a three step process, which means that we can go ink, watercolours, finishing touches, done, happy, beautiful, fun. Just no stress, um, but still great. And we do that by simplifying. We do that by using fun techniques like continuous line drawing. And we also do it with using rich but watery colours so that the watercolours themselves do all the work. They do all the painting. So in this video, let's have a look at all these, these loose and interesting techniques and how to take the stress out of quick sketching. And um, of course, if you enjoy my style, um, and apologies for the self-promotion, but if you enjoy it, um, I've got a course, uh, I've got a website, in fact, called um, sketchloose.co.uk. And on there, I've got courses which are about sketching, sketching fundamentals, but with an emphasis on my kind of loose sketching feel. Love to have you over there if you fancy it. Um, if not, please stay with me here. And if you enjoy this video, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what you would have done differently. In a short video like this, in a short sketch like this, uh, there's so many decisions to make, there's so much art sort of thinking to do that we'll all just approach it in different ways given our chance. So let me know what you'd have done differently and it's really interesting to hear. But with that, let's move on and do some sketching. So all we're using for this sketch today is a watercolour sketchbook. This happens to be 300 grams per square metre. It's got lovely... Um, uh, cotton paper with a smooth, uh, not smooth, sorry, slightly rough, a slightly lightly textured um, paper. Got a couple of clips holding things together. I'm going to use a bit of carbon ink. This is carbon black ink, uh, the waterproof ink in my Diamond 580 pen. Um, this is a, a fountain pen, of course. Um, and then I've got my normal watercolours. I've just got a medium sized Chinese brush. And if you know people want to know the size of this brush, I don't know. That's my answer. It's about a size twelve round or a you know a large medium large mop. And um, these things are aren't well sized. They're not uniform. So um, all I know is it's quite a good size for this this piece of paper. And what are we going to do? We're going to do a really quick sketch. We're going to aim for a sort of ten minute sketch. We're going to break down. I used to do lots of ten minute challenges, but what I'm going to do is break down the 10 minute challenge into stages so that we can sort of understand together um, what those stages might be. If you're just wanting to really quick sketch, what might the stages be? And it's going to be three steps. And the first is going to be ink, then it's going to be watercolour, and then it's going to be a cheat. So, you know, we've got 10 minutes and we'll get what we can done in 10 minutes, but then we want to let things dry. And that's where the cheating bit is, you know, you, you're sat outside and you decide to finish your coffee and then do a bit more sketching or perhaps you even finished it outside and then you came home and you're just like I'm going to touch up this bit and this bit so it becomes a hybrid sketch where it's not all done at once but it's still a lovely on plein air sketch. Now this scene as well of course we did in direct watercolours in another video so you can also check that video out and just see how the same thing can look very different but also the same um, and hopefully find that quite interesting. But without further ado Let's uh, let's get started. Now, in the direct watercolour video, I opened by explaining different ways that you can set up uh, the sort of uh, proportions, the, the, the way you're going to frame your image. And I used pens to lay out and frame the image, and I explained you could do a thumbnail. If you're doing a really loose sketch, there's another thing you can do. So here's another really simple way of starting your sketch. You can literally go, you know what, hey, what's the biggest shape? What's the biggest shape? And here it's basically a triangle, isn't it? We know what? There is my triangle. And now I have a basis to work from. And you know, you might think, oh no, you, you, you've ruined it. You can't do that because how are you going to get all the details in on that? Well, you, you just will. They'll just go on top and this line will fade away into the distance. You could always done it in lighter. You could done it in pencil. But just by doing the biggest shape, you can immediately 
just having a clear idea of where you're heading. We could we could advance that. We could do the next biggest shape, the the wall here, and the the row of houses. And now we've kind of got exactly what what we're going to be doing. Really, it's very simple now. Um, in the direct watercolor version, I did. Um, I didn't add in this boat, but let's add in this boat today. So we can add in that. It's a big shape. So there's approximately what it is, and there's also another shape in the background. There are these hills. So let's now just go for it. So what we're going to do? I'm going to start at the back of our houses, and I'm going to work forwards. Um, and just by making sure this one is small enough, it means that we can be sure we'll get everything else in. We don't need all the details, but we can be quite fine. We can be quite gentle and get a lot of the details in. And we can just work our way forward. And I'm going to try and do this as a bit of a continuous line, because I think for doing a really quick sketch, actually continuous lines are great. You have to work quickly. You can't go back too many times. You know, you're kind of stuck with what you do. And so you make simplifications. And because you're adding in extra lines to join things together, actually you do something very simple and it, it looks complicated. It's a cheat. You're conning people into making it look like you put in a huge amount of effort when in fact it's just the stylistic effect of a continuous line drawing. So we can come forward. I'm now on to the sort of biggest row of houses, these ones with navy tops and different coloured lower floors. And we can come down and just grab this sort of frontage. And again, I might lose my place a little bit, but it, it's all right. Might add some of these sort of car shapes in, and they're so far away, they can be really simple. So there's like a blue set of rectangles that I've just added, just simple rectangles. And I'll try and remember when I come to the colour that I, I want to add some blue to some of the rectangles. We can come up to these windows. I'm just going to keep going all the way along this row of windows, because that's a nice sort of linking feature, isn't it? And then I can come down the bottom. I can be a little bit more neat. I can add in, again, just boxes for these cars. A couple more windows here. And then find the triangle shapes, which are making some of these roof shapes up. Go along there. Another set of chimneys. The chimneys are a real feature, aren't they? The more you do things like this, the more you, the sort of, the further you get into your drawing, the more you'll find. Look at all these chimneys and how they're actually going to be a really interesting feature. And we can already start planning. Maybe, you know, they're all white and a couple of them actually want red and blue. But maybe we're going to change the colour. Maybe part of our simplification of the colour is all the chimneys going to be unified and that's going to be our feature. Maybe that's a good way to, to simplify it. So as we're doing our quick sketching, we're we're focusing on our image, but we're also getting excited for what's um, what's coming in the near future. So come down, get this little frontage. Got another car, so let's keep this idea of just basically rectangles for the car. Last little front, which is just sneaking in. And now we can come in and we can build up some of these other shapes underneath the kind of wall. And it doesn't have to be continuous. You know, we can break it up like this. That's fine. There's a little white building here. A uh, pier going out. And that pier connects conveniently to our boat, which we've already sketched in as a loose shape. And how are we doing for time? I think we've gone about three minutes so far. So not much more time left, but just a few natural shapes in the sea just to make it feel like we've done something there. And we can then start just maybe simplifying this by just doing a an outline of all the greenery. So instead of trying to be really clever and grab different shapes within the greenery, we just do an outline of the whole lot. Maybe a couple of these trees which stick out, they can have their own little uh, circle. And then this here, this can have its own little thing because it's a house, same here. Kind of st stacked up house wall. Make poke out a little bit more just to really show it above all the trees. And now we've gone over all of that line that we drew in roughly first. So it's basically disappeared. And that is about four and a half minutes in. Step one done. A loose, pretty much continuous line. I did stop a couple of times, but I picked it up again. So basically this is a, a continuous line sketch. Now our colours. So what are we going to do? Well, 
we haven't got long and the obvious feature is these houses isn't it these beautiful colors so we're gonna have to leave some stuff blank so let's start with what we know we're not leaving blank let's start with our houses so we're going to go with a nice bold red in there that's going to paint itself we'll pop in some yellow let that sort of also just enjoy painting itself for a bit let's use a nice cobalt blue it's all primary blue and that will paint itself then we can come along and there's like this kind of primary blue here as well so there we go we've got this nice pink so why don't we use just watered down red because then we're not getting confused with extra pigments and if you've seen my other video you'll know that I didn't do that in the other one actually what I did was I used um, a perylene violet so I did another way of simplifying I'm going to use moon glow this time for some of these dark areas because it will in all this water the moon glow will split into its constituent parts so it's got a red a green and a blue in it and these kind of loose washes just are what basically what moon glow was made to do and bear in mind moon glow i i recently learned and someone on my channel actually some one of you guys very kindly pointed out to me um the red in moon glow is fugitive so just bear that in mind if you're doing any commissions and you're using uh moon glow if you're doing anything which you want someone to have on their wall forever and you're using moon glow then um it may be uh just worth recognizing that the the red will fade um the rest of it isn't so it'll still stay a dark color but the red lovely red tinge will fade so we've got these colors look very very loose um, but really fun really interesting and blending and moving together we've only got we've got about three and a half four minutes left so what what can we realistically do i'm going to start by just applying a couple of greens so i've got a cascade green in in here and just some of these shapes where we've actually formed real shapes with our green and then we need to decide if we're going up with a colour or down. So we're going to fill this green or we're going to make a sky. I actually think I'm quite tempted to make a sky. So get some blue and just jump that in. And then the greenery is going to be our negative space. What we can do to prevent it just being a huge block of negative space is we can add lots of water and give our book a tap. And now look, we've got this fluid joining which is also helping our reflections and then we can just keep looking around and start going you know where else do we want to amp up the color i had a question recently um, about um how do i get um bold colors despite loads of water well um bold colors is just about the amount of pigment and the amount of water is about how much they'll flow because the amount of pigment will be the same at the end when all that color all that water sorry has dried so it doesn't matter how much water to make the, make something dark or saturated. It's the amount of pigment that you put on the page. And eventually, when the water is all dried and gone away, the amount of pigment you actually used is what creates the, the bold colour. So that's how. It's because I use loads of pigment. I use loads of water, but I use loads of pigment as well. Now I'm going to reflect this sky. So using some of this blue just making sure we match these blues from the top and the bottom and there we go and then we talked about these chimneys and I, I do want to play with that idea I do think that would be really good fun to play with so what color can we use and I'm often I use a red I love a red in the chimneys but if I do that we've got this red here and that red there and it just I don't think it will work so what I'm going to do I'm going to use a, an orange I'm going to use a quinacridone orange and then every chimney is going to have a touch of this what's a very lovely I think a very lovely warm orange just to bring a sense of unity across the whole image and then a couple of splashes and a couple of green splashes in there and do we want to do anything else well how long have I got I've actually got a minute and a half this is unbelievable for one of my 10 minute 10 minute challenges I normally have to cheat an awful lot um well i'm going to do just last couple of drops to get a little bit more do you see how this has just suddenly lifted the whole image just getting that extra intensity of color and again look it's it's about the amount of pigment like i said before all i'm doing is adding more pigment to the page nothing else nothing clever and there we go a few little variations in the sky and what we can do is let that dry and in oh, a little while to be fair lots of water on there probably 10 15 minutes that's a good 
mm, two cups of coffee. <laughs> um, but in two cups of coffee time, we'll be able to see what else we might want to add to make this go from a really quick sketch to a really quick sketch, which we just amped up. We just added something extra to, uh, which we can't quite do in that 10 minutes. So here we are, we are nice and dry now. And you can see actually, this is really rich. The, the pigment has stayed, which is great because watercolors, obviously they, they fade as they, um, as they dry. But because we added lots of extra pigment, we can see these really rich colors, but also this interplay of amazing textures. Now I would, I would argue you could probably just call this done. This is a really love, it's, it's, it's certainly abstract, but it's certainly also reminiscent of the scene, which is what I want from my sketches and my quick sketches. But let's just, for the sake of argument, let's say we got home and we wanted to add something. We wanted to go, you know, let's just add a little punch. Let's just do a little bit of something at the studio. Now with that in mind, we might decide to get out a slightly different brush. We might bring out little brush. I've got a size 8. This is um, by Etcher and actually their, their brushes are quite thin, quite small. So this is more like a size 6 I think in many other sizes. And I've also got my pen again, which is an extra fine nib pen. And what are we going to do? We are going to find a couple of little bits of punchy contrast and saturation. So what's the contrast? Contrast is like black and white, isn't it? So the, having the darkest darks and the lightest lights. So let's find some darker darks just in a few small places. And that can be as simple as windows, simple as tiny windows. It can be as simple as doors. So we just find these lovely little contrasts. We don't want to overdo it. We don't want to overpower these colours. But just a few touches, uh, for me at least, I think we'll probably just elevate it a little bit. I don't want to do too much with the line work. You see the lines are kind of flowy and we could go around and one thing which is often good is putting a bold border around but putting a bold border around also makes it a bit more illustrative and that would take away from this lovely flowy colour so actually just highlighting details and highlighting some of this contrast with a little bit of blocking in and a little bit of hatching in places I think actually that's a you know it's enough it's, it's more than enough it's it's plenty it's it, it sort of pulls things forward enough. So bold lines pull things forward. Contrast pulls things forward as well. Even on this boat we can add a few you know, windows. I don't know if they're really there in the reference or not, but they're there now in our in our scene. We could add little extra tufts of sort of uh, greenery if we wanted to. Just little flecks and flicks like this. And there you go. I think that's actually more than enough with our colour. I don't, I don't think we needed to do that, but I hope you agree it's added something. It's made something sort of a little more interesting. Similarly with the colour, what we don't want to do is make this too illustrative and too challenging on the eye. But even with that, what we can do, if we're careful, I'm just going to avoid having too much water on my brush. If we're careful, we can just make some of our punches of colour stand out a little bit more. So we can take these chimneys and we can just enhance this quinacridone sienna this orange it's on them we can take our lovely blue and we can just use that to touch in in a couple of those places and produce the idea of a shadow just the idea of a shadow which blends that in a little bit and bring that down but we don't want to do too much we don't want to do too much at all so a little bit of yellow maybe just in touches here touches there maybe a little flex and then um, kind of we can do little uh, patterns in the in the sea to suggest waves little, same with our little red here just gentle little lines flex going on which suggests those little wavy patterns in the water and maybe a couple of splashes and these splashes will just they'll layer on top um, unlike the the other splashes which kind of you see how they they blend in if we splash on a dry we end up with this kind of layered effect which is um subtly different but but also definitely different and there we go i know some people can really hate splashes um i'm not one of these people i, I really love them you can certainly overdo them but um, i think they add a lot of a lot of fun a lot of texture a great shorthand way of filling up negative space and implying rather than actually spelling out detail and there you go that's that's going to be it really really short i think most of that was me me waffling 
and that is my really loose uh, 10 minute plus a couple of cheating minutes um, sketch of Tobemori, those fascinating, lovely, bright, bold, primary colour houses going along, which we've got the effect of, rather than doing it as an illustration, rather than doing it perfectly or neatly, we've got our version of it, or at least I've got my version of it. And I'd love to see your version, so um, do share with me on social media um, if you sketched along and had some fun. Do check out the other version of this that I've done, which is a direct watercolour where we go straight in with watercolour and we actually add ink at the end. So interesting to see how these, you know, just by flipping the ink first, ink last, how it changes the feel and changes the, the processes. Um, of course, if you enjoy, leave a comment, like, subscribe, really, really helps support the channel. But more importantly, just come back and watch something else if, if you want to be creative, have a bit of fun and join in with this kind of loose sketching style. Thanks very much, everyone, and uh, happy sketching. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.